So hi and welcome back to Night Hacking. We are still at the Erdev conference and now it is the first time that we have, well, a cyborg in our interviews. So, oh my god, <laughs> I'm very happy to, <laughs> uh, to have Elsa here with us. Uh, with us. So, Thank um, you for yeah. having me. Well, w very welcome. And um, yeah, could you introduce yourself and specifically what does that mean to, to be a cyborg? <laughs> <laughs> sure, that's a fair question. So I'm Elsa. And I'm a synthetic biologist by background, then became a VC, so helped invest in, build and launch mm -hmm. a bunch of really groundbreaking biotech and deep tech startups. Mm -hmm. And now I'm a futurist. So it, it means I'm really interested in biologizing the world. So using science and technology to solve humanity's biggest problems like climate change, augmenting our health, and maybe at some point colonize Mars. And so a cyborg, <laughs> um, it's, it's just someone that, you know, visibly or invisibly has in some way augmented themselves with technology. And, you know, someone who has to have a pacemaker, for instance, mm -hmm. you could call that a cyborg as well, right? Yeah, fair enough. And, and so what I hope is that rather than being an early adopters kind of gadget mm -hmm. that lets you do, you know, fun, fun things. I hope it can be really used to, you know, help us overcome some of our most debilitating mm -hmm. diseases and help us really unleash our full potential, overcome mobility issues, and stuff like that. Lives. Yeah, absolutely. So the question, well, what I think everybody's not interested in, like, what makes you a cyborg? What, uh, what, um, what did you augment uh, your body with? What do you have? Um, so um, I'll let you or guess <laughs> for just a second. Lasers or <laughs> I <laughs> wish. <laughs> like that Swords. would be a really great use case. You know, like Clark Kent. Yep. You can just like open any door. Um, exactly. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately not. So I, I have an NFC enabled chip mm -hmm. in my left hand which I got implanted at an event you may have heard of uh, called Pioneers Festival, mm -hmm. where kind of future tech meets, you know, this beautiful ancient Hofburg building. Um, so it's a very nice contrast. And there I, I got this chip implanted to, to basically send a tweet mm -hmm. just by hand swipe. And the second function, though, is... I triggered a genetic orchestra that I prepared beforehand mm -hmm. uh, with a composer friend of mine and I had the genetic code of a really interesting organism that I won't wow. bore you with details with, but we converted this genetic code uh -huh. into beautiful orchestral classical music. And wow. so it was tweet, uh -huh. genetic orchestra, uh -huh. tweet, genetic orchestra. And so the fun thing is you can actually enhance the limited storage capacity of just 88 bytes mm -hmm. by creating a thing called a webhook. Mm -hmm. So it's just stores the link externally right. and then you can do like at least so two things. communicate with yeah. something else and then yeah. do whatever you like once you're... Uh, exactly. So the hand basically now speaks IoT. Mm -hmm. So it lets me communicate directly with machines, which is interesting. Wow. That, that is really amazing. That's, <laughs> uh, that's super interesting. And you did the keynote yesterday. I did, yeah. It was a huge honor. Uh, full room. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so what is your impression? Was this your first time at the uh, Eredev conference? Or? It is, yeah. yeah. It's the first time here. It's the first time. So I've spoken at, you know, Future Tech and... Mm -hmm deep tech conferences. It's the first time though um, that I have the, the great privilege to be specifically at a developer conference. And I think this is some of the most interesting kinds of environments mm -hmm. because of course scientists and generally investors and deep tech people, they are aware mm -hmm. of what I call digital biology and yeah, biohacking yeah. and all this crazy stuff like this. <laughs> yeah. But it's really cool to actually introduce a whole bunch of new people mm -hmm. to these concepts because my my passion is to biologize the world. Mm -hmm. And ironically, it's not just that bio is getting digitized, but also tech is getting biologized. Mm -hmm. And it's an area I find super interesting. So this intersection between tech and bio. Wow. 
Yeah, and then just uh, increasing the awareness for yeah, yeah, absolutely other people as well for regular developers or for anybody who wouldn't um, naturally not be um, that close to that topic. Yeah, absolutely. Open up a, a <laughs> whole new world. <laughs> exactly, like take people on a journey um, through this rabbit hole of mm -hmm. nanoscale molecular machines. Mm -hmm because there are so many parallels between the genetic code, so the software of life, and you know a computer program. Right. So I think there's so much that the two fields can learn from each other. Right, wow. So for anybody who's interested in that topic to, to learn a little bit more about it, for, for example, what is possible today, do you have any recommendations where to start with or where to start looking into that, <laughs> that topic? Or even becoming a cyborg uh, <laughs> one, one day yeah. uh, and, and joining and being an early adopter as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in the biohacking community, there are a bunch of subcultures mm -hmm. um, and I recommend everybody to check out all of them. So you have the do-it-yourself biology um, people who are mm -hmm. doing things like open source insulin and then the you know in, in the US there's there's this EpiPen debate mm -hmm. so the, the problem there is insulin is exorbitantly expensive and so there was this this group of basically you could call them medical hackers who mm -hmm. made a do-it-yourself version of the EpiPen like for like, source, like absolutely, an open source exactly, <laughs> absolutely, and that's why it's so powerful. And so, a, a great way to check out the sciency part of biohacking or digital biology is to Google stuff about synthetic biology. Mm -hmm. And so, for instance, there's um, you know this really famous group around Craig Venter. Mm -hmm. And they do things that, that, that are just, you know, insanely interesting, like um, partitioning the heart drive of a living species to to function and maintain, you know, the cell, basically the hardware with less than 500 genes or reboot one species with the genome of another species. And then, you know, the rebooted species starts synthesizing stuff and proteins mm -hmm. from, from the one it has the genome from. And there's, you know, a project to write entire organisms from scratch, like mm -hmm. the synthetic yeast projects. Um, or, you know, we can sequence DNA in space, like it was done by a NASA astronaut on the like, International Space Station. Really? Wow. Yeah, so, you know, Google, Google is people's best friend. And so oh. if you search <laughs> synthetic biology, Craig Venter, uh, oh, uh, so George Church is another huge name. So he has multiple things going on, like offering um, whole genome sequencing. So really thrusting us all into the era of personal genomics. Um, he also has this project to bring back the woolly mammoth, so de-extinction. And there's actually a, a real, you know, climate cause behind that. Mm -hmm. And... Even though it sounds like, you know, funky and like a bit of a s science fiction inspired joke, Jurassic Park, all of that. Um, scientifically, it, it actually makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, to repopulate, uh, you know, the, the permafrost region mm -hmm. and prevent the, the melting and releasing like something like um, 1.4 gigatons of CO2 mm -hmm. back into the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, and, and the more... <laughs> grinder movement body hacking part if you google um, a company called dangerous things um, by by a friend of Sounds mine <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I like that name. Um, by a friend of mine Amal mm -hmm. and so he basically m makes the chips that most people that I know have now in their hand and um, y there are things like um, cyborg happy hours or implant mm -hmm. boots and you know um, you you can you can figure out a way to to get a chip implant wow that <laughs> sounds super interesting <laughs> a little bit painful so uh -huh. it, I, I think it helps to have a, an actual use case uh -huh. to to put a you know a needle like that in your hand and you know yeah, it was just about <laughs> to ask it, 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 like how you, could you compare like the pain when inserting that is it like getting a tattoo or is yeah it's, it's probably a mix between getting a tattoo that concentrates the whole surface on just one point 
and getting a piercing, something like that. Yeah. And so the thing is with the the chips, you don't need, or you, you typically, you don't use anesthetics. Mm -hmm. So it's just... <laughs> you just do right it. Wow. <laughs> it's a rite of passage, I think. <laughs> so <laughs> just have to do it. <laughs> wow, that that is super interesting. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks, uh, thanks a lot for sharing all these uh, uh, all these ideas and, and thoughts with us. Um, My do pleasure. You have, do you have anything um, else to share, maybe for folks who cannot attend this very conference? Uh, what your uh, impression is, uh, also, or any? Well, yeah, other things uh, to, to share for folks? Yeah, sure. Um, well, definitely make it here next year. <laughs> I can second that. Because <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's an excellent event. I think, um, you know, we, it, it's an interesting conference because you have these hardcore developer-focused um, sessions mm. that, you know, people do demos and they, they code stuff live. that like, I don't understand anything about, but it's super interesting. And you have these more big picture keynotes. And actually, we, we, we are having right now quite a few cyborgs here. So mm. there's, um, and, and, you know, bioethics. So there's uh, my friend Alex, who is speaking about, you know, the bioethics, how, how far should we take you know yeah. this manipulation of right. humanity and and you have uh moon rebus mm -hmm. i think so she has the um you know like an earth sense installed mm -hmm. in, in her elbow so it vibrates when there's an earthquake and so you have you all these the earthquakes, yeah. absolutely exactly mm -hmm. and so you have all these really cool inspiring people who open you know our technical minds a, a bit more to the bigger pictures as well which which is a, a really nice balance yeah, so if you're interested in, in meeting a cyborg, then you, <laughs> you should totally, <laughs> totally attend you. There's so many of us. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> wow, that was very interesting and mind-opening. So thanks a lot, Elsa, for taking the time. Thanks so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. You. Yeah, likewise. And for everybody watching, well, thanks for watching. Bye.